Drop this. Oh, thank you, sir. From my wife. Yes, sir. <laughs> I recognize the handwriting. Yes, it's just a note telling me that... That's all right, my boy. You don't have to explain. I'm a husband, not a jailer. <laughs> I know, sir. It was only about dinner last night. My friend, this isn't the Middle Ages. A woman can write letters to whom she pleases, can't she? Yes, sir. You see, this was just to say she quite understood my not turning up to dinner last night, and that she realized I was worried about... about my being transferred. Of course. <laughs> this transference of yours, you mustn't let it get you down. We all have our setbacks, you know. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks. Well, I must be going. Shall I see you at the club tonight? Possibly, sir. That's right, you come along and forget your troubles. So the Irishman goes into the museum, and there on the wall he sees a great stuffed fish. A top, 14 or 15 feet long at least. <laughs> he looks at it a moment, he scratches his head, and then he says, well, says he, be jabers, the man who caught that's a confounded liar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a beauty. <laughs> How delicious, Commander. <laughs> Did you like it? <laughs> Didn't go so badly for an older day, Mrs. Chris. No, Commander, it's very good. Thank you. <laughs> Did you like that dialogue? Hmm? Oh, very amusing, dear. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I forgot you'd heard it before. <laughs> they say a man's never a hero to his own valet. <laughs> or to his own wife, either, I suppose. <laughs> Well, I think you tell lovely stories, Commander. <laughs> <laughs> so he does, on the mild side. But good enough to go on with, eh, Commander? Uh. Would you care to dance, Mrs. Stone? No, thank you. Diana, why not? Go and dance. Thank you, Charles. I don't want to dance. But I'd like to see you enjoy yourself. Go ahead, Jekyll, you insist. Please, Mrs. Dell. I'm sorry, I don't want to, really. But you can give me a cocktail. Oh, come with us, Charles. i see you later. <laughs> Another drink, Diana? No, not for me. Well, well, you've no stamina. <laughs> Two more Bacardi, Walter. Well, I, I know it's none of my business, but it makes me angry every time I see her and the commander together. My blood positively boils when she comes near me. If I were the commander, I'd put her across my knee and paddle her. Well, really, I don't quite see what she's done. Precisely. No one ever does see what she does. Charlie's such a decent fellow, too. It's a darn shame. He doesn't deserve to be treated like that. One of these days, I'm going to give that young woman a piece of my mind. Why not now, Commander Hutton? Uh, oh, um, Diana. Uh, what, what, come and sit down. No, thank you. I prefer to stand. You see, I should hate to make your blood boil. Yeah, don't you say the funniest thing? <laughs> Once again, listeners never hear any good of themselves. But I don't withdraw. You probably heard me say that I should very much like to spank you. I should imagine that few things would give you greater pleasure. And what about the gallant commander? You were about to give me a piece of your mind. I was about to do no such thing. I don't attack women. Except behind their backs. Charles, I'm tired. I should like to go home. Oh, would you? Very well, dear. You're the skipper of our ship, aren't you? <laughs> Come on, then. We'll just say goodbye to our friends. Good night. Good night.
You're in love with him. I said you're in love with him. Do you hear me? Yes, Charles, I hear you. Is that all you've got to say? Yes, that's all. Then it's true, is it? No, Charles, it isn't true. It never is true. I sometimes wish it were. I know you're in love with him. I've known it for weeks. You think you've been very clever, both of you. Don't you always so cool and formal? Will you dance, Mrs. Sturm? No, thank you, Mr. Jekyll. Really, Mrs. Sturm. Yes, really, Mr. Jekyll. Shall we go upstairs? But I won't stand it, you see. I won't stand it. Well, you won't have to any longer. He's been transferred from your ship. Yes, he has. <laughs> it was I who had him transferred. Transferred for inefficiency, what's more. Is that true? Yes, it is true. Does that mean that he's disgraced? It means a great deal. It means that his chances of promotion are postponed indefinitely. It means that he'll probably be a failure all his life. You've brought him luck, haven't you? Oh, you! You can't do that. Can't I? <laughs> it's done. Well, you've got to undo it. You can't. You've got to help him. Why should I undo it? Help him? What for? Because he's done nothing. Neither have I. He's not in love with me. And you're not in love with him, I suppose. No, of course I'm not. No more than the other men you've suspected me of. I never cared a rap for any of them. Most of the rumors about me you started yourself. And you know that too, really, just as well as I do. I think I've never loved anybody in my life. Oh, Charles, please. You've got to let him go. Let your lover go. He's not my lover. Prove it. How can I prove it? Oh. Get him round here. What are you going to do? You say you've been telling me the truth. Yes, I have. Well, if you have, I'm going to give you another chance. Well, what do you want me to do? Just talk to him. I shall be on the veranda. Do you mean that you're going to listen? Yes. And watch. Oh, it's absurd. I shan't do it. You don't do it. You'll give yourself away. I thought you were anxious to save him. Oh, six, five, three, please. Hello? Lieutenant Jekyll? This is Diana Sturm. Uh, listen, it's rather a strange thing to ask, but I wonder, could you come over here? Yes, now. Yes, I, I know it's a bit late, but only for a few minutes. It's really rather important. No, I can't. I can't explain, but I'd be awfully glad if you could come over. No. He's not. He's gone to bed. Well, that's awfully nice of you. Thank you so much.
Hello. Hello. Cigarette? Thanks. What about you? No, thank you. I've been smoking too much lately. Makes my throat go all pieces. You should ration yourself. <laughs> yes, I must ration myself. Um, why don't you sit down? No, thanks. I'm all right. <laughs> they always seem to be having fete days in this place, don't they? Yes. What's this one called? The Feast of Barum. Oh, yes. Well, that's the biggest one of the lot, isn't it? What did you want to see me about? I just heard about your being transferred. Yes? Well, at least I've known about it for weeks, but... I only just heard that... Well... You just heard that it was for inefficiency. You're not inefficient, are you? Your husband thought so. You've been awfully nice to me the short while we've known each other. I've tried to be. Yes, I know you have. Uh, why? Must I tell you? Why, no. No, you don't have to. You mightn't like it. Oh, well, don't let that stop you. All right. You know, I got the idea that people don't understand you. Oh, the misunderstood wife. Well, they, they don't speak very nicely of you. I know. They like your husband, and... They don't like me. Yeah. See, I've got some foolish habits. And one of them is the incurable habit of helping a lame dog over a stile. And in me, you've discovered a lame dog. I'm just a fool sentimentalist, I'm afraid. I'm not even in love with you. Unromantic, isn't it? I told you you might not like it. Well, you're wrong. I like it very much. You see, that's what I want to make sure of. Oh, I was pretty sure already, really. You want to make sure? Because I want to help you. Just as you wanted to help me. This makes it easier, that's all. Good night. Good night. You're a bit of a puzzle, aren't you? No, not really. Good night. Good night. I wish you'd believe in me and trust me. Oh, Charles, my loyalty's never wavered for an instant. I've never forgotten how generous you were to my father before I married you. I put you on your career before everything else. But don't you see that we can't go on like this much longer, hiding it from everyone? These violent scenes, one after another. A year ago at Tangiers, six months ago at Gibraltar, and a month ago here. And now you're trying to make out that I'm insane. Oh, Charles, it's silly to talk that way. But I can't forget what the brain specialist told you. That no doctor on earth can help you if you don't help yourself. Does it amuse you to torture me? Charles, you're torturing yourself. Oh, let's not talk about it anymore tonight. Charles, please. How do I know what you said to him when he first came in? Let's talk about it in the morning. I'm so tired. Didn't you? Didn't you whisper to him he's going to listen to every word we say? Oh, Charles, this is... Go on, say it. Insanity. You're trying to drive me to it so that you can have him. But I'm too smart for you. I'll have him booted out of the Navy. He knew I was listening. He knew it. Of course he knew it. 
I'll ruin him and I'll ruin you with him. He'll never have you. I'll... Oh, Charles, please don't, please. Kill you. I'll kill you. Charles. Oh, no. Charles. Charles. All right. I can wait. I'm in no hurry. What were you doing? Why, well, I was just walking. You looked half dazed. <laughs> oh, you don't know me. That's my normal expression. But uh, why walk out there? I don't know. It seemed as good a place as any other. Uh, have you got a coat? I had a coat. Why don't you wear it? I don't think it would suit me any longer. You ask a lot of questions, don't you? Oh, what can I show the lady? Oh, uh, nothing, thank you. Uh, uh, but, lady, I have the most beautiful... What are you going to do now? I'm going to wait here a minute until I get my nerve back. You don't appear to have lost it. <laughs> you mustn't judge by appearances. There is something the gentleman would like to give the lady. No. She isn't that kind of a lady. Go away, will you? Uh, but, sir, I have a shawl like nobody else. I don't need a shawl. But the lady... I'll go to the devil. But, lady, I am a poor man. What am I to do? Well, you heard the gentleman's suggestion. But, sir, uh, you are in my shop. You must be just. Uh, perhaps the lady uh, would like some rare scent? 
All right. How much? Only 30 dinars. Then I'll leave us alone. We're going to stay here till the crowd thins. If the gentleman wishes, he can go by the back way, which is quiet now. That's a good idea. Come on, we'll do that. If you will only follow me, eh? <laughs> Where do you live? So you began asking questions again. Well, don't you want to go home? No. What do you want? I want never to have been born. Goodbye. Are you going to leave me? Yes, I think so. Where are you going? I don't know. Then I'm going there, too. You'll find me bad company. I'll take a chance. <clears throat> it's true what I told the bazaar man. I'm not that kind of a lady. I know. I'm not a fool. Why don't you tell me all about it? There's magic out here. Do you want to kill it? What's your name? If I told you, it would make even the desert dull. But if I'm going to see you again... You're not. This is an oasis, isn't it? Oh, heavens! An amazing scent, smell. You should get your money back. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. You look to me very lovely. It's the starlight. There is magic here, isn't there? It's the starlight. Even you, even your heart is beating just a little faster. It ends here. Aren't you making a mistake? No, darling. 
certain. Quite certain. The magic would disappear if we met again. Risk it. It's been too precious to risk. Do you love me? I have loved you. Do you love me? I love you. Go on, darling. Tell him to drive on. I'll give him the address later. Go ahead. Diana. Where have you been? You've lost the right to ask that question. I see. It's very cheap scent you're using. Where are you going? Upstairs. goes into the museum. There on the wall, he sees a great stuffed fish, a tarpon, 14 or 15 feet long at least. <laughs> he looks at it a moment, he scratches his head, and then he says, Wilbur James is the man who called that a confounded liar. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that good? I only just heard it for the first time last night. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Have another drink. No, thank you. Ah, oh, Diana. Come down. I want you to meet my new lieutenant. Santa, I want to introduce you. This is my wife. How do you do? How do you do? Oh, you, you two haven't met before, have you? I only arrived here yesterday, sir. Of course, you tell me, didn't you? I'm afraid you must excuse me now, Mr. Sumter. I hope we shall meet again sometime. That would be charming. Don't go, darling. You're not in the way here. We weren't talking business, were we, Sumter? No. Don't let me drive you away. I'm leaving myself. I just uh, came to hand over my papers. Oh, thanks. Goodbye, Mrs. Stone. Goodbye. 
Goodbye, sir. If you have a few minutes, Lieutenant, I'd like to talk to you. It might be useful to go over your instructions for the maneuvers before we sail. Hmm? Why, certainly, sir. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Keep Lieutenant Semter company for a few minutes. Uh, excuse me, Semter. I, I shan't be long. Certainly, sir. Well, aren't you going to speak to me? What is there to say? You're angry with me, aren't you? Very. Because I'm married? Partly. You think that puts a new light on everything, don't you? I told you if we met again, the magic would vanish. You were right. Even the memory of last night's magic now looks dirty. Oh. So you feel strongly about how married women should behave, do you? No, I don't care a rap how most women behave. <laughs> but I was different, hmm? Evidently not. But I was in love with you. Last night. And today you despise me? Are you sorry last night happened? More sorry than I can say. Men can be very spiteful when they're hurt, can't they? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to be spiteful. But I am hurt. It's merely that today I met your husband. Last night I hadn't. I see. And you like him? I think he's grand and somehow pathetic. There's something helpless about him. He gives that impression quite a lot. Are you staying at the club? Yes. Oh. Then you've probably also heard what he has to put up with in me. That I make him very unhappy. Have you heard that? I have. And after last night, you think you know why? I suppose so. My dear, you're very young. What do you expect from a woman you just meet in the streets? I expected nothing. But I thought I'd found a lot. Well, have you been entertaining each other? We've done our best. Listen, Samta, you've probably got lots to do, and so have I. So supposing you come back and dine quietly with us tonight. Just the three of us. Then we can talk over our plan of campaign, have dinner, then go aboard comfortably afterwards. How's that? That's very nice of you, sir, but I have some things to do and some letters to write before sailing. Write them now, my dear boy. But uh, if you don't mind, sir. I mind very much. We three will dine together. Eight o'clock. <laughs> Don't be late. Goodbye. 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 See you tonight. Did I tell you that one about the Irishman and the fish? <laughs> yes, you told it to me this afternoon. So I did. <laughs> I must be getting old, what? <laughs> Have you been to this part of the world before? No, this is my first trip. It's fascinating, isn't it? So it is. <laughs> We've been here nearly six months. Should be quite glad to see home again.
Would the Admiral like to buy a rare carpet? <laughs> Thanks for the promotion, but I still don't want a rug. Uh, but just a little rug. The Admiral must have something to walk on. The Admiral will walk on you if you don't leave us alone. But surely there's something that the gentleman would like to give the lady. Ah, perhaps the lady would like some rare scent. Ah, good evening, sir. This is an old customer, Admiral. He will recommend me. What, Tempter? You've been shopping already? You didn't lose much time in finding somebody to buy presents for. Who is she? Fellow's made a mistake, sir. Ah, but only last night. You're mistaking me for somebody else. Uh, yes. Perhaps I make a mistake. Yeah. To buy you a drink. May Allah bless you. As for the other gentleman, perhaps I make a mistake. But I don't think so. <laughs> yes. <laughs> These native fellows will never know what they've got in their minds. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> 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 What's the time? It's a little after nine. Is it indeed? I think you'd better be getting aboard and see that everything's straight. Very good, sir. I'll be down presently. Good night, Mrs. Stern. Good night. Well? Lovely night, isn't it? You tell that man with the rugs to come up here. Didn't you? Yes, I told him. You bribed him? Why? Have you got some crazy suspicions again? Have you? Answer me! What would you like me to tell you? You've got something in your mind. You know you have. What are you going to do? I'm going down to headquarters, and from there I shall go aboard. You're not going to treat Semper as you did Jekyll, are you? No, I'm not going to do that. Well, what are you going to do? My dear, you wouldn't like me to spoil the suspense by telling you that, would you? Besides, it's really too painful to talk about. Charles! Is Commander Storm aboard yet? No, madame. Not yet. Oh. Well, I think I'll go below and wait for him. Very good, madame.
I had to come here. Where's Commander Sturm? He's gone to headquarters. But he'll be here at any moment. Perhaps you'd like to wait for him here. I have some things to do in the control room. No, please, don't go. This is important. Well? Charles knows about you and me. Oh, he does. I don't know what he means to do, but it's something horrible. So you're scared, huh? Yes, I am. I'm scared for you. It's you he's after. I... I came here to warn you. That's very nice of you. What am I supposed to do? Well, there isn't much you can do, really. Except keep your eyes open. Oh, I know it sounds absurd, but he might do anything. I don't like to seem inhospitable, but we're sailing at 11. You think I'm exaggerating? Yes, I do, a little. Evening, Quinn. Nice night. Yes, sir. Mr. Storm's aboard, sir. The ship? She went down the battery hatch, sir. Battery hatch? Did anyone but you see her? I don't know, sir. Tell the duty officer to get underway and stand out of the harbor. Aye, aye sir. Well, I'm going. Before I go, you may as well have this. I brought it here for you. You'll probably laugh and think I'm being very theatrical. Not theatrical. I just think your nerves are unstrung. Oh, very well. What is it? Are we moving? Yes. Oh. Hello, Diana. Sir, we're underway. I gave orders to sail. But you didn't know Mrs. Sturm was aboard. On the contrary. I did know Mrs. Sturm was aboard. But... But we're not due to sail till 11, sir. I gave orders to sail. Yes, sir. Semta. Have you ever felt sick to death and tired? Tired of being alive? No, sir. I can't say that I have. You're a lucky man. I often have. I do now. It must be a happy thing to look like you do. I suppose women love you. Oh, Charles, please. I've never had that. It must be a happy thing. I'm in love with my wife, you know. She, of course, has never been in love with me. Oh, my dear, that's not true. I love you. I loved you when we were first married. But you killed it. I think you meant to kill it. You did everything a man could do to make me hate you. 
Now you do hate me. Do you love him? Yes. Does he love you? No. Yet he's been your lover. I know that without asking. Why did you ask me then? I thought you might pay me the compliment of being honest with me. I'll pay you that compliment. It's true. Stations for diving. Aye, aye, sir. Bridge! Stations for diving. Conning tower secured, sir. Ship's ready for diving, sir. Dive. Open main ballast vents and flood valves. Take her down to 30 feet. Main vent open, sir. Depth. Aye, aye, sir. 30 feet. Put 500 pounds in torpedo room trim. Put 500 and forward trim. Put 500 and forward trim. Make the ship's call letter on the oscillator. Aye, aye, sir. Make the ship's call on the oscillator. Fifteen degrees right rudder. Fifteen degrees right rudder, sir. Rudder fifteen degrees right, sir. Steady as you go. Steady as she is, sir. Lieutenant Semta, take the periscope. Very good, sir. Hard dive, both rudders. Full speed ahead, both motors.
Get swung. Get the mattresses. the distress call on the oscillator. Just a moment. Lieutenant Semter, you are relieved from duty for culpable inefficiency in the performance of duty. Take your men off to the control room and stand by for further orders from me. Aye, aye, sir. Come on, men. Got anything yet? Not yet, sir. Hmm. Perhaps your motor generators are damaged by the collision. You better check them. I'll take the headphones. Yes, sir. The motor generators are all right, sir. Are they? And something else is wrong. Perhaps it's grounded. Here, see if you can find out. Yes, sir. <clears throat> well, men, there's nothing for us to do except just wait. We're trying to signal for assistance. Up to now, we've failed to get in touch with anyone. But when we do, we'll try the escape hatches. This is your first dive, too, isn't it, Carlson? Yes, sir. Bad luck. Still, cheer up. We're not dead yet. No, sir. We can do better than wait. Condoba. Aye, aye, sir. Put in your lung. Yes. Ready, sir. Cranchett? Here, sir. Jennings? Here, sir. Hanson? Here, sir. Rock? Here, sir. Stand by to come up the dogs on the battery room door. The minute the door's opened, go into the battery room and open the drain to the salvage rescue line. You can't do that. That's madness. The battery room's completely flooded. I saw the bulkhead carry away. If we open that door, we're finished. Lieutenant Sumter, I said you were relieved from duty. Carry out your order. Aye, aye, sir. Aye, aye, sir. Wait a minute. If you carry out that order, it will be the end of all of us. He's mad. Do you understand? Who is she? How did she get out of her? No one of them. You didn't know there was a woman aboard, did you? Nor did I when we sailed. If it weren't for that, maybe we now shouldn't be at the bottom of the sea. So it's fair to you men that you should know the fact. This woman is my wife. She is also Lieutenant Sempter's mistress. That's been happening behind my back. She came here for a final meeting with him before we sailed. She couldn't restrain herself. She's that kind of woman. 
She couldn't restrain herself. I say she couldn't restrain her own scent. <laughs> Lieutenant Sumter, you are under arrest. Lieutenant, confine him to his quarters. I'll smash the first man that makes a move. Do you realize there's no command on this ship? Commander Sturm is insane. Put that man in irons! I meant what I said. I'm giving orders here. Lieutenant, arrest this man. Leave him alone, do you hear? Diana, get out of the way. Get out of the way! Hold on, I'm taking command. Lieutenant Sumter, you're mutinous. Listen to me, all of you. You think you've got a fine captain, don't you? Well, I know more about him than you do. I'm married to him. And I tell you, he's a madman. He sank this ship, and it wasn't by accident either. This precious captain of yours has murdered a lot of you because he was jealous of me. That's madness, isn't it? Now will you believe me? You'd better give it up. No! Call the Wallace man. Right here. Step forward. Yes, sir. Your oscillator isn't working, is it? No, ma'am. It was working until Commander Sturm sent you on a mission. And you left him alone there, wasn't it? Yes, ma'am. Well, go and look behind the set. You'll find the wires cut. Well? Yes, sir, the wires are snapped. Somebody's cut them. Men, come to your senses. Lieutenant, detail a man to the torpedo room aft. Have him report to me on the escape gear. Sure, he's mad. Lieutenant Sumter is right. Well, Lieutenant? Let's go. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. Listen, men, we're going to try the conning tower escape right away. It isn't any use waiting for a salvage boat to pick us up, nor is it any good tackling the battery room. We've got to take a chance. Get your artificial lungs and fill them with oxygen. Keep gear aft ready for use, sir. Good. Let your men escape through there. Second division, go aft. We'll use the torpedo room hatch. Ready, ma'am. What do we do now? You see that hatch? Yes. Six of us go up there and uh, close the lower hatch. Then we flood the conning tower until the pressure inside is equal to the sea pressure outside. Then we open the upper hatch, release the marker buoy, and go up the buoy line. Breathe naturally and uh, don't be nervous. I'm not nervous. Good. Ready, sir? Right, let's go. Lady going to first bat, sir? Yes. Are you frightened? No, I'm not frightened. Come on, then. Go on up with these men. Good luck. Goodbye. Take charge. Aye, aye, sir.
The upper hatch is closed. They're all out. Get ready to go up. All ready, men, for a flooding torpedo room. Release our marker boy. Come on, get on your escape gear. No. When the hatch opens, I'll let you go up first. If I won't? Then I shall plug you in self-defense. I see. All ready, sir. Come on, get up there. Well, are you going? Yes, I'm going. Sumter, this court finds you not guilty of culpable inefficiency in the performance of duty. The court, however, sustains the second charge based on your relations with the late Commander Storm's wife, and we therefore find you guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer and a gentleman.
Good evening, madame. What can I do for you? Me? Oh, nothing, thank you. I beg your pardon? Oh, uh, um... Uh, I want one of these things. A billiard cue? Very good. Do you like a light one or a heavy one? Oh, medium. Here you are. Shall I uh, send it or will you take it with you? Well, I'll take it with me, thank you. Very good. What are you doing? I was buying a billiard cue. What for? I wanted a billiard cue. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Shall I uh, give you a lift? No, thanks. I'm going to walk. But it's raining. Yes, I know. Very well. This is the first time I've seen you since, um, since the accident. I know. Except at a distance, at the trial, when you uh, gave evidence for me. Why have you hidden yourself? If I hadn't, I thought you might have called me up. Oh, I mean, uh, you might have thought you ought to, out of a sense of duty. Why were you waiting on the street just now? Well, I don't know. I was worried about you. I knew what this thing would mean to you. You minded? Terribly. You see, it was really all my fault. Filthy night, isn't it? Oh dear, that goes my billy cue. What were you saying? I was just saying it's a filthy night. That's curious that uh, you should say that. Why, what do you mean? Well, uh, stop a minute. Look up there. Well? You see? See what? The stars. The stars? Well, there aren't any stars. I tell you, there are stars. The starlight was never brighter. Oh. Hey, taxi! <laughs> 